Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise, Praise the Lord. 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 Praise, Praise, Lord. Lord. Ah, Praise God. We thank God for you that are here. Amen. At this present time, we're grateful to, to see some of you and to see your names, your photographs. Praise God. It's <laughs> good to see you. Amen. God bless you on this morning. Um, we're going to uh, open up with prayer, then we're going to go, amen, into uh, today's um, uh, lesson. Praise God. Uh, with your heads bowed and hearts lifted. Father, we thank you, oh God, for this day. We thank you, Lord God, for allowing us this privilege, this opportunity to come together once again, oh Lord, and ask the God that you would Lord God, allow us, oh God, hallelujah, to just delve into your word and, oh God, to get the understanding that I know that you desire for us to have, oh God. We thank you even for your faithfulness, oh God, oh God, in opening up our understanding, oh God, leading us and guiding us. Help us, oh God, to be that faithful servant, Lord God, that is committed to abiding in your word, Lord. We thank you today. We bless your holy name, Jesus. We glorify you, Lord God. In the mighty name, in your mighty name, and even we ask, oh God, that you would bless each home, each family, strengthen, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Look upon the bereaved at this time, oh God, comfort hearts and minds. In the name of the Lord, heal, Lord God, deliver, loose and set free, Lord God. Most of all, save. In Jesus, your precious name, we pray. Can we say Amen? Amen. Praise God. Right. Okay, so today, amen, what we wanted, what we, what I wanted to do is sort of, you know, um, I wanted to get a sense and an idea of uh, our study of Second Timothy and how, what you uh, took note of, what stood out. Um, and it sort of helps me to, 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 to understand if we're, amen, praise God, making progress, at least I am in terms of teaching, praise the Lord, or amen, praise God, and of course you can always improve, and, and, and that's one of the things that we're continually, amen, praise God, trying to do is improve upon the process, amen, praise God, that the Lord gives us to use um, but I, one of the things I, I, I take note of is that uh, no matter how many times we go through a scripture, uh, a passage, uh, uh, even a verse perhaps within that passage, um, there is this sort of uh, uh, greater enlightenment that we get. And, and to me, that is unique to the word of God, because there's no, amen, praise God, as we, as scripture talks about in one sense, no past finding out or understanding, you know, of him and, you know, and his word, there's no end to it. And so, but he gives us sort of, or peels back a layer you know, perhaps one at a time. And once we, and even those times when we think we've got a complete understanding, he gives us more. And so, uh, you know, with that said, um, I would like to, for you all to share with me today, if you would, um, uh, your thoughts, uh, what did you come away with in, in our study of this chapter? Uh, I mean, book rather, a letter. Uh, we, we began, I believe, sometime around um, um, uh, around the, uh, the uh, early part of July, and we're here today. So, um, so about a month, a little over a month, five weeks and six weeks. Amen. Praise God. Your thoughts. What stood out? <laughs> Let's start with that. Oh boy. (laughs) 
Praise the Lord. Okay. Which one do you want to go first? <laughs> well, I'll, I'll start off. Go ahead, um, Mother. Okay. I'll try to make it kind of brief. Um, what came to me was the fact that Paul was a, was a, uh, a good example for anyone mm -hmm. to follow. Paul was strong in the Lord. Um, he had faith. He was, he was led by the Lord. The Lord communicated with him what would go on in his life. Mm -hmm. And he followed steadfastly what the Lord said. And because of that, not only did he bless himself, but he, he blessed others. Mm -hmm. And at the end, he was able to say that he fought a good fight and he kept the faith. Mm -hmm. and, and I love the part where he says, glory to God, henceforth there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness, mm -hmm. which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, mm -hmm. but unto all them also that love his appearance. So that's what I that's what I got out of it. All right. Amen. Thank you, Mother. Praise God. Right, well, Amen. Sister Lee. Okay, praise the Lord. I'm praise little, the Lord. Since I'm a little poor. Um, a mm -hmm. little happy this morning. <laughs> <laughs> so I fit to this word. Um, well, what I got out of it is selfishness has no place in God. Mm -hmm. you know, serving God, and I wrote some stuff down so I won't be babbling. So serving God is a lifetime commitment of giving yourself, your whole self into death. Whether you're sick, weak, sad, depressed, oppressed, joyful, um, anxious, mad, strong, upset, you know, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. um, if I miss something, it doesn't matter how you feel um, or what you're going through. Mm -hmm. You know, you need to make sure that you are um, continuously serving God and not being selfish. Be mm -hmm. careful how you treat one another because what you do towards one another, you do it unto Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, um you're going to go through some um, hardness mm -hmm. and you're going to suffer. And this way is hard. Uh, uh, um, it's, it's hard to be saved. It's hard um, going through. Um, and sometimes you may want to um, give up, but you got you to gotta continue to move forward um, and know that God is with you until the end and nothing can happen to you until God give that permission. You know, and whatever you're going through, God has to sign off on it. And just make sure whatever state of mind you're in, God wants you, God wants his return because he invested in you. And when somebody invests in you, like when you go to, when you, if you're in stocks and you, you invest in something, you put some money in something, mm -hmm. you want, you know, you want that dividends, you want some return back. You're just mm -hmm. not investing your money and not expecting to get anything back. Mm -hmm. And that's the same way God expect for, you know, want from us. He gave his life for us. Jesus mm -hmm. gave his life for us. He invested mm -hmm. in us. So he want that return back. Mm -hmm. You know, he want that return back. And how you do it, you know, is by obeying his word mm -hmm. and doing what he said do. And you didn't come this far. I know when I, um, one thing Paul was saying is, you know, he want his crown of righteousness. So I want you all to be encouraged. You didn't come this far to lose your crown of righteousness. You know, if you saved now, if you've been saved for two, two minutes, you ain't come this far to lose that crown because what you did to get saved, you had to put some work in it. You had to repent. You had to purge. You had to, um, you know, and you, you got to serve God. So or whether you've been in it for, 10 years, 50 years, you didn't come this far to give up that crown of righteousness. So that's what I got of it. Okay. Um, Paul didn't come that far to give up that crown of righteousness, no matter what he was going through. Okay. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Um, uh, one thing that I got out of it um, was from uh, the second Timothy, the first chapter in the seventh verse. When it says, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And for me, that stood, that stood out like huge for me because it, it's one of those things where I have to think about a lot um, when it's time for me to do different things. 
sometimes I end up saying I'm, I'm scared. And um, someone talked to me yesterday and was like, that's just an excuse. And it really is. Mm -hmm. it's, it's an excuse for not doing what the Lord has told me to do. And just like you had said many of times, Bishop, you know, if, if the Lord has told us to do something, then he's the one that take care of everything. I don't have to take care of anything. What I have to do is just be obedient. When he tells me to go, I need to go. I don't need to figure out, okay, where, how long, when, what do I do? I have to be obedient to God. And with with God being the one that's before us, then he strengthens us. He's leading and guiding us. And then he gives us that power, that power, not within ourselves, but it's him. He works through us that love like no other, that unconditional love and that sound mind, that peace of mind so that you can go forth and do what it is that you need to do. So that's one of the biggest things for, for me. I'm going to just pause because I ain't going to keep talking, but that's one of like the biggest things for me he hasn't given us this fear that's not of God and so I know for myself I must continuously lean and trust and depend on God and know that if he said something his word doesn't return back void and stand on it I can't stand on uh, uh, maybe a whole bunch of stuff but I know one thing I can stand on his word his word doesn't return back void it doesn't return back empty and so I thank God for that in Jesus name amen Praise God. Praise the Lord, Saints. Can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Um, thank God for those that have uh, put in their um, um, say about what they've learned. And I just wanted to mention a song that I was just thinking about just came to my mind. And it says, ordinary people, God uses ordinary people who are willing to do what he commands. And I thank God for Paul, and I thank God because this is God's plan, and it was ordained a long time ago. And he used Paul, um, and Paul was willing to do what God commanded him to do, and that was to preach his word. And in doing that, we know that um, this is a suffering way, and the word says that, you know, those who name the name of Jesus you know, we have to suffer and we will be persecuted. Um, and so um, I just praise God for Paul, you know, God using him and for him being obedient to what God had ordained him to do. And um, I just know that whatever God has ordained, whatever his plan is, whatever his purpose is for our lives, it will be fulfilled. And in doing what God has told us to do, we're going to go through. Um, life is going to happen, but God has promised, and his promises are yea and amen. And so that's what I've gotten out of. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Praise the Lord. Um, Praise um, Lord. Too much of a... a um, a speaker, but I, I, I'm a, a child of God and I do obey um, his, his word. And with what I took out of the, the lesson is um, to never give up, you know, no matter what situations you come go through, you know, how Paul was locked in prison, but he never gave up and, and um, always encouraging your brother man um, in, in the faith, you know, where, you know, you might see one of your sisters or brothers going through something, you go to them and let them know, you know, God is able to bring you out of this, you know, to be in, not only encouraging them with that entail, you encourage yourself and when you're encouraging someone else and also warning um, your, your brother and sister in Christ about what could come upon you, you know, with, with people that are, um, having the form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. We, we run across those things and we have to warn one another when we come into it, we can, we can tell a story about what happened to us in the midst of it and how God brought us out of that. And to speak truth. And, you know, um, Paul always spoke truth, no matter what he was going to uh, endure by speaking it. Um, 
asking God to um, forgive your enemies because mm -hmm. we we do run across a lot of enemies that we might not even know that they're in uh, enemies, but that's why you always pray for them too mm -hmm. in your prayers. Um, no matter, uh, okay, something else I have written down. Um, basically, that's that's the gist of it. Just just trusting in God, and no matter what you go through. Because God is able to perform what he said he would do. He's not a man that he can, he lies. Amen. He has to live up to his word because his word is true. Mm -hmm. It's alive. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. God. Amen. Praise God. Anyone Praise else? the Lord. Praise the Lord. I thank God for this beautiful letter to um, Timothy from Paul. And what's so beautiful about this letter is Paul knows that his time is at hand. And he wanted to encourage Timothy to go on and, and, and further and furtherance in the, in the ministry. And this is beautiful because what, is, what it showed me, we have to encourage one another. Even when we are going through, we still have to encourage one another. And, and I thank God for Paul being an example. You can't say anything unless you're an example, or unless you live in that life. And Paul lived that life. And he let us know, just like it's today, there's many going to fall away from the truth. But mm -hmm. we need to stand. Those who's willing to stand, don't be discouraged, but stand because the gospel of Jesus Christ must go for on until Jesus come, hallelujah, because there's always souls. Mm -hmm. There's many, many souls that yet need to be saved. There's many souls that are saved and yet need to be encouraged. Mm -hmm. So I thank God for Paul, because even at, in his, during his last time, he still was encouraging the brethren. Thank you. Anyone else? Surely there's another. Praise the Lord, Bishop. Praise the mother. I was talking, but my phone was muted. Oh, um, man. I praise the Lord because um, I just love the whole book of Timothy. Mm -hmm. Um uh, one one sister already said, you know, when Paul advi advice to Timothy was, for the fear of God is not not given us in spirit of the God has not given us the spirit of fear. Amen. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, I I just love that. I said, thank the Lord, somebody on the same page with me. <laughs> but, Amen. And um, also, um, I try to tell my family to study. To mm -hmm. show that self approval unto God, work that need not be ashamed, rightly by the word of truth. We have got to study. Now, we have good teachers. Lord knows we have good teachers. And I just thank the Lord for that. But we have got to um, study, you know, for ourselves. And I just love what the scriptures say all scriptures given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for proof, for correction for instruction and righteousness we have got to be obedient um to god's word and he can use us if we are obedient and that's part of my daily prayer lord help me to be obedient i just thank the lord and i thank the lord for the for you and uh all the teachers that you have there um elder gillespie and Elder James, I got names for everybody. I, I'm not going to tell you the names on. But anyway, one day I'll tell you the names that I have for everybody, even um, Elder Williams, Johnny Amen. Williams. Today. Praise God, yes. Mm -hmm. I just love I just love the prayer and, and um, the teaching. Amen. But, um, Praise God. And I love the word. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you, Mother. Mm -hmm. Oh. Praise the Lord, Pastor. Let me chime in for it from my brother's perspective. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. Um, so the 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 letter to Timothy um, serves as a good 
example of, um, for lack of a better term, I'll put succession planning. <laughs> and that's a term we use that Paul knowing he, him, he, he was going off the scene, um, understood that it, everything wasn't going to end with him and that it, the work would continue even after uh, he was gone. And so the instructions that he gave to Timothy uh, was very helpful in, in grooming Timothy and helping him to uh, understand uh, things that had happened and that uh, you know could he could potentially face moving forward. So I think it serves as a good example uh, for even uh, our leadership today um, to uh, groom and to nurture uh, those who are coming alongside of us so that the work doesn't die when we die. It just mm -hmm. continues because there are those who have been along with us and have come along with us uh, to and have learned of us and learned of our, um, uh, you know, learned of our doctrine, our manner of life. This is one of the things he that uh, Paul was telling Timothy, uh, you know, our faith and all. And so they, they've seen how we teach. They've seen uh, the stand that we take. Uh, and so they're able to pick up the mantle uh, and take the, the work on uh, and moving forward. So I think it serves as a good example for that. And Paul, he does, he really does a lot uh, in uh, this letter to encourage. He does a lot to point out um, the sacrifice and the, uh, and the, the, the support of other people. Um, he gives credit to whom credit is due, you know, honor to whom honor is due. Um, he does a number of things where he, he points out, um, you know, the good of all of those who have interacted with him and have helped him. And he recognized that he didn't do it all himself. He had plenty of help along the way, people that strengthened him, people that came to see him, people that stood by him. Uh, so I think it serves as a good example uh, in all of those areas. Um, so I will, I will pause and uh, let someone else chime in. But that's, that's my two cents uh, to this point. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Any other brothers? <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, Bishop, I was pausing, waiting for some of the brothers to come in. But uh, two things that I really I got out of this particular lesson. Um, well, one of the things I'm teaching the young children, and we're we're on the early part of Paul. We we started off Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians. So those were the books, the letters, and it really gave me a good perspective of Paul's mindset that he had a made up mind all the way through, and that it's easier to go through whatever the Lord has for you if you got a made up mind to go all the way. And so that come what may, his, he had a made up mind. And that kind of stuck with me is having a made up mind. It makes this walk kind of easy. The decisions are going to come and trials are going to come. But if you have a made up mind, you've already decided that you're going to go through because as somebody said before, you got your eye on the prize and that's what you're looking for. And I love what Elder David said about the succession planning because I thought about so many of our churches and I know Bishop Woodrow Roach, even my father tried, but um, when they prepare somebody, their work goes on. But one of the bishops was telling me a lot of times we put a lot of work and we build up and we do a lot of good work. And then when the leader goes off the scene, sometimes the work dies out or the church goes down and it's not, if it's not properly prepared uh, for, and I feel like the Lord gives the man of God warning that his time is coming. Most of the saints I see when they leave here, they know it's they're going. They know it's their time. And they could either bargain with God to give them more time to get the work prepared to go on. But I just feel like that is just Paul did an excellent job of preparing Timothy for what was coming and that the church and the work of the Lord would go on. So uh, Paul is just somebody I totally admire as, a, as an excellent example for us in this Christian walk. Man, praise God. Uh, Mother Rouse, I think praise you had your... Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, praise, yeah, praise the Lord. Um, and good morning. Good morning. I, 
I'm a woman of few words. And I'll be listening to y'all. Y'all, y'all so educated and sound so beautiful, you know. And I'm like, okay, I need to speak up, you know, and I'm not there, you know, and I feel like be quiet, be quiet. And I oh, hear somebody wow. to say something that I had on my mind to say, mm -hmm. I said, Lord, bless me. <laughs> Y'all help me out Go ahead, here. Mother. Go ahead. Because no. I was thinking in um, 2 Timothy uh, 3, when they said, you know, the last days, you know, mm -hmm. the perilous, you know, perilous times should come and everything. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about um, the people that I know that's doing all these things and you know, I should pray for them and stuff like that. You know, to be lovers, men of lovers of the self or something like that. And um, I said, oh my God, you know, I have to have a made up mind to serve the Lord. You got to come out of sin. You know, you got to be a strong soldier in the army of the Lord. You know, I have to read. And one thing I don't do, and I'm asking the saints pre play for me, I don't fast because I don't want to have the form of godliness and deny his power. Mm -hmm. So, you know, y'all please pray for me, you Amen. know, that I speak up and not be so scared to say things, you know, because some of the things that y'all say, it'd be already on my mind. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Wonderful. Bless your mother. Praise God. Thank you. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, Sister Gat. I just, in reading this, I just see Paul's unwavering commitment to the charge that the Lord um, gave him. And through whatever came, he just remained steadfast and faithful. Mm -hmm. And um, I just, the, the scripture that comes to mind in the legacy of Paul is um, when in Revelations where the scripture says, be thou faithful unto, unto death, a paraphrasing. And, um, and I will give you a crown of life. And Paul knew that he had held, he kept the faith. He did, he just, like I said, he, he, he accepted the charge and uh, that the Lord gave to him and he didn't waver. He was faithful until the end. And um, I thought that that was just an excellent example because a lot of times when we, we know that we have Jesus as our example, but we kind of, People will say, oh, well, he's God. So he was able to fulfill those things. But mm -hmm. yet here is a man, mm -hmm. um, Paul, just as we are. And he mm -hmm. was able to um, to continue on in the faith and and um, and do as the Lord had asked him to do. Mm -hmm. Amen. Wonderful. Thank you. Praise God. Anyone else? Anyone else? All right. Okay. Well, we thank God for you that have uh, shared uh, your your thoughts and uh, with us and and the insight that that you had either gained or 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 was confirmed. Amen. Praise God in this letter. So at at this time, I'm going to ask if you would. Uh, this is probably you may, uh, a little bit more, um, uh, let's say, um, um, easier, let's say, perhaps for you to contribute to, but is there a particular verse in chapter one that stuck out? Then we're going to move to chapter two. And we're going to move to chapter three, and then we're going to move to chapter four. So those, uh, there's a verse in chapter one. <clears throat> Is there a verse that sticks out to you? Or even a portion of that verse? Oh, I'll start off. Uh, so in chapter one, uh, one verse that sticks out, um, actually it's kind of, combination of the two a uh, seven and eight for god have not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love of a sound mind uh, be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of the lord 
nor of me as prisoner, but be thou partaker of the affliction of the gospel according to the power of God. So the portion that sticks out is, is that which Paul was a part of uh, and that he represented uh, and that he propagated and, and pushed forward uh, was in fact the testimony of the Lord. Amen. So I think that that stood out that this is about um, about the Lord himself. His testimony is what we are a part of. And, uh, I was grateful to, to, uh, to glean that. Amen. Very good. Anyone else? Chapter one. If it's the same verse, then just share that with us. Um, Bishop, first line. You said, I can't hardly read it because I just, I, I just start crying and I can't get it out. But anyway, verse nine in chapter one. Okay. Who have saved us and called us with the holy calling. Mm. Not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Amen. Amen. I thought about Jeremiah when I read that. He said, I knew you when you was in the womb. Mm -hmm. Praise God. I'm a holy Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Mother. Pra Praise the Lord. Can you hear me? Yes, Mother. We can hear you. Okay. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise Second Praise Timothy, first chapter, seventh verse. Okay. For God have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. That verse sticks out to me because of what, what we're in now, the, um, this pandemic and you get afraid and, um, but God doesn't want us to be afraid. He wants us to use the power that's within us. And the power that's within us is the Holy Ghost. And I'm just going to leave that right there because then I'll be getting it in my testimony. <laughs> <laughs> Bless you, Mother. Praise God. Bless you. Amen. Also, thank you, uh, Sister Michelle. Uh, she says the third, uh, uh, Second Timothy 1 and 7 for her as well. Praise God. Anyone Praise else? The Praise the Lord. Bless your mother. Mm -hmm. um, the verse that um, grabs me uh, on the first in the first chapter is thirteen. Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. Uh, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, the verse that really strikes me is, um, well, the one that Sister Ollie read, <laughs> but also um, when uh, verse five. I found it. Hmm? Sorry, uh, we have Sunday school going on on the other side. <laughs> it's all right. It's There's all right. a lot going on in the house. <laughs> <laughs> When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. I'm just thankful for that passage, um, just because it shows the impact that um, faithful women can have on their families. Amen. Praise the Lord. Wonderful. Praise the Lord. Um, Second. Second Timothy 1 and 12, for which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. And that sticks out to me because I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. That was my scripture, um, 112 <laughs> and 1 and 7. <laughs> <laughs> Bless your daughter. Amen. Anyone else? Amen. Someone that has not as of yet shared with us. Can you share a verse in chapter oh, one? Sure. And I'm piggybacking off of Sister Ali and then some others, chapter uh -huh. one, seven, uh, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but the power and the love of a sound mind, which I do have. And also 12, for which uh, cause I also suffer for these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know who I have believed and are persuaded and is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. And I am definitely committed um, to my walk and not ashamed of God. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Wonderful. Praise the Lord. Praise mine him. is mine is verse 14. Mm -hmm. That good thing which was committed unto thee, keep by keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. Amen. Praise God. Wonderful. That good thing. Praise the Lord. Anyone else? Anyone else? All right, well, <clears throat> I'm going to share mine. Mine is uh, the first chapter, uh, verse three. And it says, I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure with pure conscience, that without ceasing, I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. And I guess what struck me was Paul's incessant prayers for Timothy. In other words, amen, when he says, without ceasing, I have remembrance of thee in my prayers, both night and day. So there was that continual, amen, praise God, um, uh, act of keeping his son in the gospel, Timothy, in his prayers, both night and day. Amen. And it is, you know, and, and I'm sure that even when T Timothy uh, read this letter, that it would have been of great encouragement, amen, to know and to understand that my mentor, my father in the gospel, amen, praise God, is remembering me in prayer both day and night. Amen. And that's a wonderful thing. And I think it's also, amen, even we can apply to, amen, going forward to one another, that we ought to keep one another in prayer, amen, constantly, amen, and continually. Praise God. Anyone else? All right, chapter two. Praise the Lord. Mine is chapter, mine is verse four. No man that ward entangle himself with the affairs of this life, that he may be, that he may please him who had chosen him to be a soldier. Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, Sister Linda, um, chapter two, part of, well, not part of it, but I like this part, um, chapter 12, um, verse 12. Mm -hmm. If we suffer, I'm going to say, if I suffer, mm -hmm. I should also reign with him. Amen. Praise God. Nothing wrong with personalizing it. Amen. Praise God. Anyone else? Chapter 2. Well, I would say two and 15. And the reason why I said that is, Bishop, you know, I was telling you how I was misapplying the scripture. Mm -hmm. Although I was talking to myself, to Jesus about this scripture, mm -hmm. the scripture was, um, um, what was the scripture? Um, your yoke is easy, your burdens is light. Remember, I was telling you about that. Mm -hmm. So I would say, um, two chapter two verse fifteen. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divided the word of truth. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Sister Lee. 
Um, I'm going to say for those that uh, don't want to uh, speak, you can certainly uh, type it in the chat window. Uh, but I would certainly, those that can, amen, praise God and will, when you can you share your, your verse with us in chapter two, one way or the other? <laughs> mm. Chapter two. Pick one. I'll go ahead and give mine. Um, I agree with, I think it was Sister Gatlin, what she mentioned in verse four. Uh, no man wore. No man that wore entangleth himself in the affairs of this life. Um, one thing that stands out is there are so many affairs of this life <laughs> that you could get sucked up into. There are things that are personal. There are things that are various causes that are out here that are worthwhile causes getting involved in and being a part of. So there, there's a lot um, that one could get entangled in. Um, but I thank the Lord for this admonishment to Timothy uh, concerning that, um, because uh, if we get entangled in those things, then uh, we won't have time for the work of God. So it's, and, and they are not necessarily one in the same. Uh, they may be uh, wor worthy causes uh, and worthwhile causes, um, but the work of God is definitely a worthwhile cause because it relates to God. So um, I thank the Lord for that, that admonishment in, in that scripture. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Thank God for that. Let me read these from the chat window. Um, uh, Sister, Sister Tasha uh, is uh, verse four, is hers. Amen. Brother Harold, uh, verse 13. Uh, from the Jenkins family, um, uh, verse 21. Thank you all. Praise God. Praise this is Parthenia trying to talk. Can you hear? Praise yes, we can. Okay. My, um, the verse that stood up for me, um, 2 Timothy, the 19th verse, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Um, just to elaborate, um, the word of God says that upon this rock, I built my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And um, nothing can come against God's church. Um, he has a seal, it was sealed. And, and that he know those that he have called and chosen. And that, you know, he's also saying that, um, that everyone that nameth him to flee iniquity, you know, and that's important because if we don't flee iniquity, then, you know, um, God will bring the judgment upon our lives. So that's the verse that, I believe is stuck out to me. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. I like, uh, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. You know me. You know me. Everybody in here know me. Mm -hmm. 11. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Uh, praise the Lord. Praise the um, Lord. Second mm -hmm. Timothy, the 21st verse. 21st I, I like verse. that. Amen. If a man therefore purges himself from these things, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and met for the master use and prepared unto every good works. Amen. That's something I need to work on. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Wonderful. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord, Bishop. Praise the Lord, Elder James. Mine is verse number three. Endure okay. hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Okay. Amen. Right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
I, I put it in the chat room, but I, I want to talk about it a little bit. I want to say it. I want to read it. <laughs> All right. Amen. I want, I want to read it. I'm piggybacking somewhat off of uh, Sister Parthenia because that scripture was the one that I had in mind. And she and she read it. So I thank the Lord that we're like-minded for the God. word. <laughs> Nevertheless, Amen. the foundation of God stands is sure. Having this seal, mm -hmm. glory, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Nevertheless, praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Anyone else? We have uh, Sister Lisa Coleman, uh, verse 4. Uh, Harris family, praise God. Verse 5. Is that anyone else? I'm going to read chapter 22 flee also youthful lust, but mm -hmm. follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that all can call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Anyone else? I like that 24th verse. It spoke to me because uh, I, I thank the Lord for boldness to testify to anybody anywhere in any situation. But I had to really start applying this scripture. But the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach and patient. Matt, verse 24. Praise God. All right. Sister Patrice Frazier, verse 19. Uh, amen. Again, verse for the Harris family, if a man so if a man also strive for masteries, yet he is not crowned except he strive lawfully. I forgot to read the comment. There are no shortcuts in the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hello. Amen. Sister George, praise God. God bless you. I had more than one scripture, but... It's okay. Sorry. It's all right. Okay. It's all right. Um, Mother Roach um, spoke on 22, I believe. She spoke on 24. I'm sorry, 24. Mm -hmm. But I was looking at 23 mm -hmm. because... Um, Sometimes when you're speaking to some, someone about the Lord, sometimes they throw in questions at you about this and about that. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, sometimes there's some things that you want to give a better understanding about, but sometimes you just have to avoid it. Mm -hmm. So um, number 23 mm -hmm. is, um, but foolish and unlearned questions avoid knowing that they do gender strife mm -hmm. and the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men have to teach and patient and just going back on um god has not given us the spirit of fear mm -hmm. in um uh chapter one verse uh -huh. seven mm -hmm. and that ties in with that because my sister had so like she's she's seeking the lord mm -hmm. and people are sending her all these videos and all these things and she's afraid of revelation Mm -hmm. So I had to give her that scripture that God has not given us a spirit of fear. Mm -hmm. And I told her, you know, even when I, before I got saved, mm -hmm. I had so many questions because everybody had something to say. Mm -hmm. Everybody think, you know, some of the, the witnesses ringing your bell. Mm -hmm. the, <laughs> somebody's telling you this about this doctrine and that doctrine and you don't mm -hmm. know and accept, you know except you read it for yourself. I told mm -hmm. her to read it and ask mm -hmm. God to help her. I also invited her 
I invited her to the Bible study. Amen. But those are what just stuck out in my mind because you do have all kinds of questions. People you're asking you all different kinds and you have to use wisdom. So that's Absolutely. what kind of stuck out with me. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Wonderful. Praise God. Thank you. Amen. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, Sister Michelle Lancaster, uh, verse 14. Of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to, the, right. but to the subverting of the hearers. Sorry, I was jumping the gun. I was moving on to chapter three. So oh, next to chapter oh. three was verse 14 and 15. Yeah, but uh, oh. thou in the things which thou has learned and has been assured of, knowing of whom thou has learned them, and that huh? thou thou has known the whole scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Okay, thank you, Sister Lancaster. She's basically telling us we we need to move on to chapter three. Oh no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> That's okay. That's good. Amen. My time is getting away, so we will move to chapter three. Thank you, Sister Lancaster. Praise God. Amen. Um, I, I did want to um, share since 14, 15. Um, Paul makes the statement in, in, in chapter two. Um, and I believe it's in the 10th verse. And uh, he says, therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. And so it speaks to Paul's willingness to sacrifice himself that others may be saved. Amen. And I thought that was a, 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 a good point to bring out. Amen. About, amen, Nate, praise the Lord, not only, uh, um, his willingness, amen, to suffer for him, uh, for the sake of Christ, but also, amen, for the, for others, amen, that they themselves, amen, praise God, might be saved. God bless you. Chapter three. Chapter three. Praise the Lord. Praise the mother. Chapter three, verse 12. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Hey, amen. Praise God. Anyone else? Uh, Brother Harold, <laughs> verses uh, one through five. Praise God. Okay. Brother Harold, you want to read it? <laughs> I can't. Sorry. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, um, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Um, I really enjoy those verses because it, it kind of reminds me of that scripture that says, save yourself from this untoward generation, mm -hmm. um, because it gives us a list of things that we can um, look, look, you know, um, examine our own selves mm -hmm. um, and to see whether we are in the faith. Mm -hmm. um, and so, um, and I also like the way you um, define those scriptures when we were in second Timothy chapter three. So Amen. I'll definitely be having those, um, these um, words on the forefront of my mind. Thank you. God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, brother Harold. Praise God. Amen. I would say um, Timothy 3, 10 through 17, um, Paul instructed T Timothy to continue in the, in the faith, what he has been taught and he must obey God. Okay. Amen. Praise God. Chapter 3, verse 16. Mm -hmm. I, get, I think I'm in 3. All scripture is given yes. by inspiration of God mm -hmm. and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, 
And what I get from that is I have no excuse. If I, if I want to know something, the word of God is going to tell me what to do. Amen. Praise God. 11, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch and Iconium at Lystra, if I'm saying that right, yes. what persecutions I endured, but out of them, all the Lord delivered me. And I'm new trying to understand how to uh, read and understand and study these words. And, you know, I don't know if that means uh, everything that I'm going through and me trying to walk with God at the end you know, God will deliver me. So that's what I got from that. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. The Harris family versus 14 and 15 as well. Uh, this reminds me of my role as a parent to ensure that my child knows the Holy Scriptures. Amen. Praise God. Anyone else? All right. We're going to move to chapter four. Chapter four. Praise the Lord. Verse 22. Mm -hmm. The Lord Jesus with you. Be with thy spirit. Grace be with you. Amen. Hey, amen. Praise God. All right. Anyone else? Okay, chapter four, one through five, Paul um, told um, Timothy it, how important it is for him to continue to preach the gospel because the people needed to hear it. Okay, amen. Anyone else? Verse eight. Verse eight. We talked about it a little bit earlier, but mm -hmm. the part that I love mostly out of verse eight, I'll read it all, but the part that I love mostly is at the end. It says, henceforth there's laid up for me, and that's Paul talking, mm -hmm. by himself, henceforth there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness. But then here's the part I love, which the Lord, the righteous judge, he's going to give it to him, shall give me at that day, and not to me only. Glory Amen. to God. Amen. But unto all them, hallelujah, that Amen. includes me. Glory. Yes, yes. And also Amen. that love his appearing. Glory to God. Praise hallelujah. God. Wonderful, wonderful. Praise God. Amen. Amen. See, the word of God should excite us. Praise God. Amen. Anyone else? Chapter four. Chapter 18. Of the And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Praise the Lord. Praise God. Um, the, script, the scripture that I'll be reading is chapter, um, I'm sorry, verse number four. I'm sorry, verse number three. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, mm -hmm. but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Praise God. Thank you. Amen. Praise, praise the Lord. Um, Amen. Um, Going out of um, verse seven, mm -hmm. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. I want to be able to say this at my ending. Mm -hmm. And that's why I chose um, uh, verse 12 on chapter two. Mm -hmm. If I suffer, I shall reign with him because going through this, we're going to come up against persecution. Amen. But if I can hallelujah. Come away, if I can Lord. hold on to the end, hallelujah, Jesus. Bless I can Lord. say I fought a good fight. Amen. I have finished my course. Amen. I have kept the faith. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus. And I will reign with him Amen. in Jesus' name. Praise God. Wonderful. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Sister Phil. Anyone else before we close out? The Jenkins family, praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, chapter four, verses two and three.
Praise God. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Praise God. And I'd like to, amen, end it with mine. And mine is a, a portion of verse seven. Praise God, where Paul says, amen, praise the Lord. Um, I have finished my course, praise God, amen. It's a good thing to know that you have completed what God has given you to do, amen, in Jesus' name, praise God. And when you have finished the work of the Lord, that the work that the Lord has given you to do, amen, then it's time to go home. God bless you, amen. We thank God for you. Amen. We thank God for all of you that participated. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Whether, amen, praise God, amen, verbally or in, amen, in the chat. Amen. Praise God. Even those of you that had a desire, amen, but for whatever reason, amen, you didn't, we thank God for you as well. Amen. Just being present with us on today. And as um, we stated, amen, on, uh, I think at the end of our last class, praise God, amen. Um, we will begin um, our study of the book of Romans, amen, beginning Tuesday evening. I will uh, have Elder Glisby post the, um, um, uh, the PDF file on the website so you can download it from there. Or if you would like us to email it to you, uh, please let us know. And those of you that are in the building, uh, you can get a copy before you leave, amen, in Jesus' name. God bless you. Amen. And may heaven smile upon you is our prayer. And again, thank you all for your participation. And again, let, don't let this be your last time going through, amen, the book of Timothy. There is so much there, even as I begin to reflect and review, amen, I read it again in its entirety, even on last evening. And I saw some things that I didn't even see going through it, amen, praise God when we last, you know, going through it this time, amen, it's, again, it's the word of God, and every time you go through it, you see something, perhaps, that you didn't see before, amen, and that's, again, that's just the Lord opening up your understanding, and then I had to go back and look at, amen, the first, uh, the first letter, and amen, praise God, and compare things with that as well, and there is so much there, Praise God, Amen. It, it's 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 a lot there, Amen. Praise God for every one of us. But even uh, I I look at particularly seven as one, Amen. Praise God. Not so much, Amen. Uh, you know, for the minister, but he can get a lot out of it. But it's that that Amen. Praise God. That leader that is over him, Amen. It shows you what you need to instill, Amen. Praise God in the one. Amen. Praise God. Amen. That will follow you. That will, amen, come after you. That will be here longer than you will be. Praise God. Amen. So, amen. The Lord has a way, amen, praise God, of just, amen, praise the Lord, amen, uh, ensuring that his church continues and ensuring that his church goes on, amen, in the name of the Lord. So God bless you. And again, may heaven smile upon you. We're going to turn it at this time over into the hands of uh who is it? Um, Elder Blissman? And, uh, uh, yeah, I guess I'll, <clears throat> I'll take it. Uh, Elder Clinton is actually presiding today. But again, thank the Lord for uh, Second Timothy uh, being able to get through this book. Again, very helpful. Uh, and you can see why Pastor um, diverted to cover this before we went into Romans. Uh, has a very um, insightful information.